Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antiochian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, May 30th, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 19 through 30. In those days, those apostles who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to none except Jews. But there were, some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Greeks also, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number that believed turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a large company was added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large company of people. And in Antioch the disciples were for the first time called Christians. Now in those days prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius, and the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brethren who lived in Judea, and they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. At that time, Jesus came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst The water that I shall give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem that is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came, and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. But none said, What do you wish, or why are you talking to her? So the woman left her water jar, and went away into the city, and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples besought him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him any food? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four months, then comes the harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes, and see how the fields are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. 
I sent you to reap that for which you do not labor. Others have labored, and you entered into her into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He said all to me that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him. And he stayed there for two days. Many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, It is no longer because of your words that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that indeed this is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. What I would like to take a look at this morning very briefly is a passage towards the very end. If you remember, our Lord has had several occasions where he's had to deal with demoniacs, people who are not in their right mind, but run around and terrorize people and hide in the tombs and and are chained and then break free of the chains and, and they're terrifying creatures. And Christ heals them, of course, but we have this encounter between Christ and the demons. And the demons recognize who Christ is they fear him, they beg him not to be sent into the abyss, and he dismisses them, gives them leave, and they enter into swine and are destroyed. What's most interesting about that in respect to what we have today is what happens immediately afterwards. Both in the Gadarene and the Gergesenes, they ask Christ to leave. They can't stand the idea of someone with such power dwelling with them, and he has disrupted what was normal for them. What was normal was the Gadarene or the Gergesene demoniacs. What was not normal was having the same person sitting at his right mind, calm like every other person. And so they're terrified by Christ because of the power that he wields, and they ask him to leave. Well, now our Lord has had an encounter with a Samaritan woman, someone that he's not even supposed to be dealing with, and someone way outside of the comfort zone of most Jews for numerous reasons. But, nevertheless, he is there talking with her, and so the Samaritans from the local town come to find out what all the mystery is about. And when he speaks to them, they are equally impressed with what he has to say. And they recognize his power because of what he was able to say to the Samaritan woman about her own life. But instead of asking him to leave, they ask him to stay. What a remarkable contrast this is, because he does. He stays with them for two days, and he teaches, and he receives their hospitality. So on one hand, you have a community of people who are tied to the Jewish people, people who know what the Messiah is supposed to look like. They know what is supposed to happen when the Messiah comes, and the response is they ask him to leave. And then on the other hand, you have Samaritans who stand outside the Jewish tradition, who are apart from it, and in fact despised by the Jews, and they ask Christ to stay, and they receive him. This, I think, is an example of what our Lord is talking about earlier in this passage, when he says, Believe me that a time will come when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in the temple in Jerusalem. And he speaks of God being worshipped in spirit and in truth, and that God is indeed spirit, and of course able to be worshipped everywhere. That is the breaking down of the barriers. Places do not hold God. So the temple, even though we see it as a place where God dwells, it is not the only place where God dwells. And Jacob's well is not the only place that is significant in the life of God. Christ, of course, knows who Jacob is and sees him as part of his own family, and indeed he is part of his own family. So we see in this particular story a healing of the barrier that exists between the Jews and the Samaritans, another healing that exists between one who is sinful and the forgiveness and the mercy and the love and the compassion of God. All who are broken are welcome. All who are trapped by the ways of this world are welcome and received with mercy and gentleness and kindness. An offering is made and can be freely accepted, not out of compulsion, not out of urgency even, but just out of love 
That is the God that we worship and we adore. A God who constantly waits for us to say yes to his offer for us to be his children and for him to be our God. That is the loving God who relentlessly pursues us so that we can find life in him. To him belongs glory always and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, indeed he is risen, and God bless you and your family and those that you love today and always. Thank you very much for joining me, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.